What's going on, guys? I am here with the lovely young Taylor. And like other vegans, she has had very similar experiences, almost like a cookie cutter story. Uh, these vegans tend to fall into it the same way. They suffer from similar symptoms. And it's incredibly interesting how this hasn't really been uncovered more. That's why we're here. So I'm going to let Taylor uh, tell us her story and her, I guess, negative and if there were any positive experiences from veganism. Hi. So uh, I suppose I'll start with when I went vegan. So I went vegan in 2015, kind of the usual way everyone goes vegan. Uh, at the time, I had a really atrocious diet, uh, and I was looking for something to be a bit healthier and to lose a bit of weight and to look good. So I was researching all different types of diets. And first of all, I was going to go with the Okinawan diet. So like fish, rice, vegetables, all that type of stuff. But uh, I came across Vegucated and I watched it that night. And the next day I became vegan. I didn't do any preparation. Like I didn't buy any groceries in or anything. I literally just decided the next day when I woke up, that's it. No more animal products from here on out. Uh, before I had been kind of having some issues with dairy. So I figured if I'm giving up dairy, I might as well just give everything else up. So I did that. Uh, the first day I was vegan was probably the most miserable day of eating I've ever had in my entire life. So I, uh, there wasn't much, like at the time, there wasn't much in Ireland for vegans to eat. So I think for lunch that day, I had couscous and a banana or something for lunch. It was the only thing I could find that didn't have animal mm -hmm. products. Not to, so what was the actual main selling point? Was it like this documentary, did it reinforce the conventional wisdom you've been told your whole life about fruits and vegetables being healthy? Did yes. it give you some sort of like moral or ethical belief, environmental, or was it like a combination of things? It was a combination, oh. yeah. Like, I mean, I, it seemed like the healthiest diet that was around at the time, it made sense to me. You know, you eat all your vegetables and your fruit and you get healthier. Uh, and also, like, I'm a big lover of animals, so there was the ethical side of it, too. So, so when, when you say it was healthier, uh, do you th have something you were thinking in your head about why it was healthier? Was it maybe, did you view just vegetables that they were healthy? Did you think they had a vitamin and mineral content to them? Did you think that uh, because they were lower calorie that they were healthy? Like, what, do you remember, or was it just, like, really just the conventional wisdom? Oh, yeah, of course, fruits and vegetables make you healthy, but then what's the definition of healthy? Uh, yeah. Well, for me, it was the usual thing. Like, I mean, in, if, have you seen Vegucated? Like, they kind of... That's literally the only, like, I've heard of a lot of people watch What the Health. They watch Cowspiracy. Yeah. They watch Forks Over Knives. Yeah. There's a lot of documentaries they watch. Uh, Vegucated, I'm assuming, is... Uh, well, I know, like, in Vegucated, there's this one girl. She's from, like, a Latino family. And basically, and she, she eats all of, all of the, the home meals that her mother cooks. And they all have meat and, like, pork and everything in them. And she just gets slated by the girl who's presenting the show being like this is full of cholesterol and and that's gonna you know your your heart's gonna give up and your digestion is going you're gonna get colon cancer you know like she scares this girl into becoming vegan so there's like four people who I think they do veganism for a month or something like there's one woman and she has uh, young kids and she does it and you can see her bragging halfway through it like I've, everyone's converted to soy milk now you know this kind of thing cholesterol uh, so, so bad why does our body make it right yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, basically, it was a combination of the ethical side of veganism and the health side being, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so it's better for your digestion. It's better for your heart. I'm going to live so long just living off vegetables and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to be like a, an, an old Japanese lady. <laughs> I'm just going to be completely healthy and, and thriving off, off this diet. Um, so it was about a week into my first miserable day of, of, after my first miserable day of being vegan, that I found freely the banana girl. Uh, Cause I was researching vegan, veganism then after that. And uh, I decided to follow the raw till four. So I thought that, that sounds great. She looks great. You know, she, she looks super healthy. Uh, she's super thin. Uh, her skin looks fantastic. So, the first thing I did was I went out and I bought all of the fruit, all of the bananas, the dates, the coconut sugar, 
And in the morning, I think I would have like a smoothie about that size, like about, the, about that size, just fucking jam packed full of, I think I would put in a handful of medjool dates and you know, medjool dates are like that size, like they're huge. Uh, and then I would put in like five bananas, some coconut sugar, Although even then, even then, even though I was going into it, the coconut sugar, like adding sugar to everything seemed a bit mad to me. Even then I was thinking this, I don't know, sugar's bad for you, right? It's so it was kind of clicking then. So I did that for about four months uh, where I would have a huge smoothie in the morning, mm-hmm. salad at lunchtime and work. And then I would come home and have a bowl about that size of either potatoes or pasta with tomato mm-hmm. sauce. When I remember the, I used to, uh, did you ever supplement at that time or at that time I did not supplement. Okay. Yeah. So God knows what was going on with my body at that time. Uh, and that's the big thing though. You, you got convinced and you guys might be yeah. thinking, Oh, this girl didn't supplement. She didn't do it right. Well, she came across all this vegan information and it wasn't clearly laid out to her. And this mm-hmm. is part of the problem of the vegan diet. You guys are, you, people keep claiming, Oh, you just didn't do the vegan diet. If the diet is so difficult to do properly, yeah. Why are so many people doing it differently? And why is there no clarification and no concrete things that people hear immediately? Like when someone says, oh, you know, people don't come up to you. Oh, take a, beef, take a B12 supplement and go on a vegan diet. They don't, mm-hmm. say, they don't say it like nope. that. They it's like they, do this and everything will be covered. Yeah. You know? And then, and then a I'm year about. into it, you realize, oh, I was supposed to be taking B12, but why did no one tell me that? Because it doesn't make the diet look good, mm-hmm. unfortunately. So you're yeah. doing raw till four. Uh, how long did that yeah, last? Yeah, so I was doing raw tofu. I remember I actually used to, uh, I used to have my pasta in a fruit bowl. My mom had this fruit bowl in the house. That's how big a Posh portion of food. Yeah, it was in a fucking fruit bowl. I, I remember I used to brag to everyone being like, look at how much food I can eat and I'm still losing weight and I look great and blah, you know. But uh, even still though, after I would eat that food, my stomach would expand to like a beach ball size. It was huge. It would be like that for about a half an hour and then it would go back down. Mm-hmm. But I did that for like three and a half months and I gave it up because I just couldn't digest the food, the amount of food that I had to eat. And it was every hour I was hungry, like my stomach would be growling, my my limbs would feel shaky and weak because I had to just keep replenishing my energy stores every hour. And I said, this doesn't make sense. I think I need, you know, more cooked meals. I need something that's a little bit more, you know, satisfying to have Mm -hmm. during the day. Uh, So I gave that up and then I continued to eat just kind of like a balanced, a balanced vegan diet, you know. So uh, I started having soups during the day and toast, uh, lots of avocado toast with pepper and salt and all that type of stuff. Uh, And Fun fact, did you know that avocados never yielded as much food as they do now? Another product of modern agriculture. There you go. But did this, did incorporating the cooked foods help at all? Like in regards Uh, to that? uh, Yeah, I mean, it it helped a little bit with satiation. So I, I was, I wasn't as hungry. When you eat a ton of raw food, like it's crazy how much stuff you put in there and you never feel satisfied. I was never satisfied. Yeah. And like, and as well, I just constantly farted like a dairy cow, like all day during, during work. I remember like a new girl came into, came into the job. And the first thing I did when I said hello to her, I was like, hello, I fart all day. Nice to meet you. And that was, <laughs> that was my life. Like that, it, it was just, I had to accept that because I was vegan, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I stayed on the cooked foods and then we can fast forward a little bit then to, 2016 um, I went to Berlin for like three weeks and it was like a big party every night that type of thing it was just no, a party I, I, holiday most people are familiar with Berlin yeah it's totally <laughs> hedonistic like it's have you ever seen that painting the garden of earthly delights I might have, but off the top of my head, I don't remember. It's just like a bunch of like naked people rolling around with people yeah, with like, bird heads. Like Berlin, yeah. That's Berlin. Like Berlin. <laughs> yeah. So I went to Berlin. So it was just it was just basically three weeks of partying, and the odd time I would have some schnitzel to recover after uh, drinking for probably up till six in the morning. You know. Um, what was your drink of choice? Uh, Sternberg twenty cent a bottle it's about that size it's a beer <laughs> german beer really good actually really good 
and then the the next day you'd get a it's called a club mate or something I don't know my my cousin he lives there and he always slags me for the way I say it but uh, it's meant to be a recovery drink it's like green tea and all of these minerals so that's like the number one German hangover cure mm-hmm. but uh, yeah so I, I I partied for like three weeks and I came back and after that holiday was when my health started to go downhill mm-hmm. so I thought so you've been on like a three-week bender maybe it's just your body recovering so uh i'm sorry but did you party like before you went out to berlin like you were yeah, maybe like once or twice a week would have been well, maybe once or twice a week but not yeah. consistently so it's not something like <laughs> i mean you were doing it but yeah. you just did it a little more okay. it was like that was it's, kind not, of it's like, not like you never drank and then went out to get you know to kill, yeah. try to kill your liver in three weeks you know that's not what you yeah. did uh, i think it was it was almost as if that trip was the catalyst for it whatever damage I'd done to myself by eating nothing but raw vegetables for three fucking months, like a little while before, you know? Uh, so when I came back, I was starting to just feel shitty on a daily basis. And um, the only way I can describe it, it's like the hangover never cleared from Berlin. Mm-hmm. So I constantly had that hungover feeling. Uh, then I started in drama college in September of that year. And I was passing out quite a lot. Like I was getting woozy all the time. I had no concentration. My, you know, I, I used to have a, this great sharp wit and that was just disappearing. Like I was becoming this zombie version of myself. My skin started to just break out all over. Uh, I was getting pimples on my forehead, on my cheeks, on my nose, on my chin, like just really bad hormonal breakouts. Um, I didn't put two and two together. I was still following vegan diet then. And I then started working in a health food store. And in the health food store, my consumption of processed vegan foods as opposed to home cooked, you know, vegan like meals with with good vegetables and stuff uh, started to go up. And I used to have to go home quite a lot from from work, like take sick days because I would just get like I, I used to get these my whole body would just shake. Did you start the supplementing going. at this time? At the health Not store? straight into it. Mm-hmm. Not straight into it. So I, I probably started the, the supplementing about about a month in. Okay. So I, I, I remember actually explaining to some of the girls that work there my, my health problems. I was like, you know, I feel so weak all the time. I'm so tired. So they gave me iron. They gave me B12. They gave me... Uh, D3, and they gave me uh, the vegan DHA supplement. The pond L- water. Yeah. Pond water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had started all of that, but, but nothing really improved. And I found myself craving meat. Like, if someone was... Actually, I remember one day I got up I got dressed and I made my way across town about a half an hour across town because there's this place that sells like phenomenally good quality steaks I got across town to just buy two of those steaks and a bag of broccoli that's all I could think about for the whole day was I want two steaks and broccoli and this I hadn't eaten red meat in like three years oh no two years sorry two years by that stage so I brought that back and cooked it straight away and devoured it two steaks after two years of not eating. And it was just an intense craving. Like it moved me across the city center. Um, so yeah, one night I was in work and um, this is about, I think this you is. You know, it's funny. That's sorry to interrupt you, but there was a recently on the plant-based news YouTube channel. They had this doctor on and he's like, Oh yeah, I saw him. These, pe- these people have a meat fixation and they never get over it and it's like they catch this meat virus that yeah. they need meat and they just it's it's insane that this is ingrained into human biology yeah who we would need take, animal foods like, who would take health advice though he looks like a scrotum stretched over a knee like he, he is he, so he, old. he literally looks like a zombie like usually when i call vegan zombies i'm exaggerating but this yeah. guy he is a zombie <laughs> Absolutely. You could use the word ghoul, uh, yeah. possibly goblin as well. He's a bit of a Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice anything when you ate those steaks? Oh, I felt so good. 
oh I, I I felt I actually I, I called my boyfriend straight afterwards and I was like I feel fucking amazing I was like I feel great I just ate two steaks and I am ready to kick the world's ass right now <laughs> but Let's take a take a run through some drywall that wasn't enough I went back I went back to veganism after that uh-huh. after those two steaks I went back to Th- veganism. this is what gets really crazy to me yeah these, these people have all these health problems on veganism Bonnie Rebecca and she starts eating eggs oh, and it fixes yeah, everything. Okay. And she's still like, oh, but vegan is still good. It's still good. Yeah. Vegan's fine. Vegan's good. It's just the brainwashing. It's just, yeah. I just don't. I mean, I'm missing that part of my brain, but I don't. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I think I think a part of it is the the fear of the attacked. I'm going to stab you with a piece of asparagus. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, who gives a shit about people I don't care about the type of people who would give out to someone for looking after their own health. I don't care about those people, you know? Like, they're pieces of shit. People like that are, are really bad. What you was know? the, you said, uh, did you have any experiences at this health food store? I, I, because I actually spoke to a, a young lady yesterday, and ironically, she worked at a health food store oh, and really was surrounded yeah. by happy vegans too. Yeah, you uh, see was it, it all. similar? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I remember one day this woman came in and she had this three-year-old child mm-hmm. and she was just slumped over her shoulder. So when you think of a three-year-old, you picture this excited little bean of energy just running around the place and fucking shit up. That's what they're meant to be doing. That's what three-year-olds do. I was on do. the subway yesterday and this <laughs> little kid ran, came in just screaming. Like I was like, oh my God, I wish I had that. Yeah, much <laughs> they're, they're terrorists, but that's great because they're full of life. They're meant to be that way, you know? But this kid was like, like a sloth, just slumped over her her mother's shoulders and her skin was gray like that's the only way I can describe it she was fair you know she was a little blonde girl her skin was gray and under her eyes she had these deep purple bags Mm. she just looked so unhealthy her lips had no color to them they were completely pale and she was so limp and floppy she just did not look well it wasn't a child that was tired it was a child that was unwell and the mother was asking for I think it was a b12 supplement for the child and she was like oh she's vegan so I just want to make sure she's covered you know she's covered in in all areas and we didn't do uh, supplements for children under the age of six in the store at that time like, they just don't exist because it's it's taken for granted that a toddler should have a healthy balanced diet mm-hmm. and shouldn't need anything unless prescribed by a doctor unless they have some sort of a condition or whatever you know um, but yeah when I saw that that was really a smack in the face about the vegan diet I'm like that child looks so lifeless so what the fuck is it doing to me you know so yeah <laughs> you, you, I used to get a lot of crazy vegans in there um but yeah one night I'll tell you well I tell you the story of what kind of got me into hospital and the cat yeah we could, we could go into that so Basically, to sum things up so far, you get in doc, you watch a vegan classic, do, vegan documentary, vegan the next day, do it for two years, very similar things to other vegans you've tried, you know, various versions of Freely Road to Four, what most people consider a whole foods plant based diet, and yet they'll still insist you're not doing it right. You start mm-hmm. taking supplements, and the supplements, did they make any significant difference, or you didn't really notice anything? Yeah, so I mean, the guys, just because you're putting something into your body doesn't mean you're absorbing it. Um, yeah. You know, if I, you know, if I drink uh, a cup of flaxseed oil and my liver fails, do you think I got my DHA? Do you think <laughs> I got my DHA, guys? Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Blood levels are not correlative of tissue levels. And this is very uh, persistent in uh, D3 supplements because when vegans take D3 supplements, they can't actually metabolize it in the body. So despite how much they take, their blood levels will always be low. Uh, mm. So th- definitely something interesting there. So... You know, you're vegan for about two years. The first year was you, you were pretty much strict vegan. And, yeah, and, and I was then, relying on the plants. <laughs> and then the second year was when you had the cravings, right? Mm-hmm. And that yeah. you acted on that craving with the steak. Mm-hmm. But did you have any other cravings that you acted on? Did that happen again? Sometimes I would crave fish or eggs. So, I mean, it, it it would be very rare and it would be with a lot of guilt that I would give in to those cravings. 
So like and every two or three months it would be like yeah. you just you were craving it so much you just literally ran to the store and bought it. Yeah, or like it, if I was hungover and everyone was having a a big Irish fry up in the morning, and that was those rashers were in front of me and the sausages and the pudding and all that type of stuff. I, yeah, I couldn't resist. So, and and uh, what vegans think is when, when they look at that plate of meat, they think guilt, shame, mm, uh, that it's bad for you, that there's yeah. some moral or ethical, what you're literally doing is depriving yourself of vitamins you need to survive. Yeah. When that, you have that poor little girl with gray skin, that's about to play an extra in Lord of the Rings as Smeagol, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. like at what point do you say, this is insane. But so then after this two years of veganism, things just started really going downhill. Yeah. Uh, the main catalyst was that trip to Berlin, though, was it? I, I think that might have been the catalyst. I mean, I, I didn't look after any of my nutrition when I was in Berlin. I just partied and I ate whatever I could eat. Uh, mm. But yeah, it all started to fall apart after that with the dizzy spells and passing out and stuff like that. Uh, but one night I was in work. So this is when it really kind of came to a head. I was in work and the week before I had been trying to be really strict about my diet and really strict meant really vegan. So I had been making all of my food from scratch and I'd been trying my best to be healthy that week, drinking water, so I'm making sure I got my water for the day. And I was making like ginger, turmeric, uh, squash soup, you know, anti-inflammatory, all of this type of stuff. Uh, so Detox boys. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really strict that week and we were closing up in work so it was getting to the last hour and I was messing around with some essential oils that's what you do when you're in a health food store uh, and I thought that maybe accidentally I had gotten some of the essential oil on my lip because my lip had started to go numb for those of you guys that have never gotten like clove oil or peppermint oil on your lips like it is it's one of the worst things you could put on your skin yeah it's now this I think it was black pepper oil black pepper oil that I was messing around with smelling oh god so I thought that maybe I did, and I was like, oh, no, I didn't. Like, I, I can't remember touching my face or anything. So then the numbness started to spread from my lip, then down to my jaw, and then across to my cheek. So I asked my boss if I could go to the bathroom and check my face. I said, my face is going numb. So he kind of looked at me, and he was like, yeah. So I went in, and my whole face was just, like, completely slouched to one mm -hmm. side, uh, completely droopy. Mm -hmm. uh, which is quite scary. <laughs> this is not like, this is not a, this is a B12 deficiency, nerve damage. It's very, this is a high correlation. And, you know, just like my, my grandma has been taking a statin for months and I keep telling my parents, you know, it's not, I'm, she's my grandma. I can't, you know, she, I mean, she's got four kids herself. So I'm telling mm -hmm. like my uncle, my mother, like tell grandma to stop taking the statin. And like my grandma's dementia is slowly getting worse. Mm -hmm. And the second she stops taking the statin, yeah back to being sharp and if you look up sim and her, her she was getting tingling hands and feet and if you google statin tingling hands and feet if you google vegan tingling and face it's a b12 deficiency these people yeah. are literally five seconds of googling answers your question so what are they seriously thinking yeah like, what, what and to me the worst part about this is and and not to give away your story but you know if you go to a medical doctor they're not diagnosing a possible they don't they don't think B12 deficiency because how many vegans no. do they see? You know, they're thinking, what what the hell could be wrong with this girl? Um, they don't have an understanding of nutrition. So, and uh, I had told them that I was vegan as well when I went into the doctors. I told them, and they just kind of brushed it off, like diet doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. with your health. They they thought that I had a neurological con condition. So mm -hmm. when I went to my doctors, I went to the doctors the next day, and he thought it might have been temporal lobe epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So to kind of explain further, the numbness got worse. It went down into my arm and it went down into my leg. So it was like the whole left side of my body. And uh, he sent me to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room and, and I was there straight in, got a CT scan and a chest X-ray, which I think is just procedural. And then they said that they wanted to keep me in overnight. Uh, and I was there for a week. So I was there for a week getting every test under the sun and I had said a couple of times look uh I'm I'm vegan and is this a b12 deficiency you know that there's such thing as a, I think it's called peripheral neuropathy which can happen from a beach and they're like oh no your b12 levels are normal they're fine they're, there's nothing to worry about there so they were looking for either uh, multiple sclerosis or 
I think it was myasthenia gravis, which are both really serious conditions. Um, when I got my MRI results back the first time, there was tiny T2 hyperintensities, which are like small lesions, but they couldn't explain why they were there. So my brain, first brain scan showed abnormalities. Um, so they had no idea what was wrong with me. I got a lumbar puncture as well. So a lumbar puncture is like a needle into the spine. They take out your spinal fluid and it's really nasty. <laughs> it was like the worst thing I've ever had to go through. Uh, when I got out of hospital, I went back to work for like a day or two, but I just couldn't do it because I was so weak. Uh, I was progressively getting worse. Now at this stage, I wasn't maybe strictly vegan after I got out of hospital. I had no energy. I had, I was basically bedridden. Um, whatever was going on with my body, I, I couldn't sit up. I was just like. I mean, B, B12 is required for energy metabolism. It's yeah. as simple as that. It's yeah. Pe people don't understand that the metabolic pathways with vitamins are so broad. It, it's, it's too hard to comprehend how important they are. Literally like it could be as big as every cell in your body requiring B12 to be made. It's, it's mm. really down to that. So for, I was off work for six months. I was sick for six months um, and I had no idea what was wrong with me. I went back into hospital again about five months in because my leg was completely paralyzed. My left leg just didn't work. Like I couldn't move it, I couldn't walk. And it was like that for about two weeks. And the third week it started to clear up and I was left with a weakness on that side. So at this time, were you still like mostly plant based? Mostly plant based. But if my mom was making food, I was going to eat it because mm -hmm. I had no energy to cook for myself. Mm -hmm. so I would just eat whatever I could get my hands on. But yeah, mostly plant based. And I was still really trying, even though I had no energy to make an effort to be plant based. Like I was I was writing my shopping lists for other people being like, please go and get me almond milk. Please go and get me couscous. Please go and get me hummus. You I know, that tofu. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to eat meat anymore. I, I was convinced that the fact that I was eating bits of meat was actually going to make me worse. Like convinced that that was worse for me than eating a completely vegan diet. So yeah, couple of months down the line, being really sick, having no idea what's wrong with me, no diagnosis um, and no treatment because they can't treat you for something which they don't know what it is. So I couldn't get medication. I mean, I was at the stage where I was thinking maybe I'm going to have to get a little cruel intention style vial of cocaine and just cart myself around on a wheelchair every day because that's the only way I would have energy and the only way I could be mobile. So yeah, I was out with my boyfriend one day and he, he watches the Joe Rogan podcast, like religiously. Mm -hmm. And Jordan Peterson was on talking about, it's that famous uh, clip, you know, where he's talking about his daughter and the carnivore diet. So he starts telling me about this. And I go crazy out of my flip out and I'm like, oh yeah, so uh, I can feel better, but I'm going to have colon cancer and I'm going to die of heart disease. Is that what you're saying to me? That's, that's what's going to happen. Those are my choices. Feel better or, you know, feel better and die of cancer or <laughs> feel like shit <laughs> and have a healthy colon. That's what I thought it was. Uh, but he, he kind of incepted me. He planted a seed in my brain because I started to research it then. And I researched Michaela Peterson's story and I thought, fuck it, I'll try it. I'll do anything for a month. Mm -hmm. I can do anything for a month and see how it goes. So I was like, sorry, piggies and cows, but I got to come first in this situation. Um, and I did it. And a week, it was a week, I think, when I'd say 98% of my symptoms cleared up. Like 98%, completely gone. I'd been bedridden for six months. And it was a week into eating just meat. I was, I was eating maybe spinach as well. I was eating spinach and avocado. So it wasn't completely, totally just meat. Got to get those calcium oxalates in from mm. the spinach. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was having eggs. So I was having meat and eggs. And, but yeah, ma the majority of it was meat. And no, no gluten or anything like that. Like no, no couscous anymore. No, uh, no sugar. Nothing like that. So yeah, a week in and I felt like a new person. Like I felt better than I felt when I was 16. Like I had more energy than when I was a young teenager. 
so it was just it was just incredible to me and um, there was a lot of similarities as well between myself and Michaela Peterson I remember Jordan Peterson was saying that he noticed Michaela used to get a rash whenever she ate strawberries when she was a kid which I was the same so my my whole life I've always been kind of allergic to lots of different foods always had reactions and there was I wasn't allowed to eat cream when I was a kid so whipped cream wasn't allowed because I would be up crying all night with stomach cramps and uh, so yeah I've always had food allergies growing up so it, it kind of makes sense that if I cut everything out I feel 100 times better and I'm also kind of bombarding myself with nutrients so yeah it was just spectacular the the transformation as soon as I started eating meat. <laughs> and now we're all driving Mercedes from the meat lobby, right? They all paid us so mm -hmm. much money for making this video that I have a Mercedes in my driveway. It's not actually a 2001 <laughs> Ford Taurus, you know, that, know that. that just the water pump just fell off the other day. That's not yeah. actually what I'm driving. So, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, uh, so carnivore diet fixes your symptoms. This is something we 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 see and these anecdotes over and over again, but we have to dismiss anecdotes because it's, it doesn't fall in line with conventional wisdom, right? Exactly. But, uh, I guess just to tell what like have you noticed positive benefits that really you've never noticed in your life from the carnivore diet outside of the remission of your symptoms? Um so I've always had like kind of stomach problems, really bad stomach issues and I thought that I had IBS. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't have any of those anymore. Mm -hmm. Um it the odd time if I eat something, like if I have duck fat, sometimes if I have duck fat, I'll, I'll feel a little bit ill afterwards. High, uh, high omega-6, the rendered fat, compromised cell structure, oxidized, doesn't digest well. Anyone having digestive issues, it's either the high omega-6 or the rendered fat it could be an issue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it is delicious and it tastes like gravy. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it is so good. Uh, I, so I have no, no digestion. My skin is cleared up. I actually have a small breakout now at the moment, but I was in London there the other day and I had pork crackling from Marks and Spencer's. I'm pretty sure it was that. Hi, pretty sure it was that. Omega so, 6, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, so get, have, I get acne from pork and duck too. I, yeah, pork is really bad. Like if, if I have a bacon, even if it's bacon that's completely sugar-free and without any nitrates, it just, good. yeah. So yeah, my skin is better. My energy levels are fantastic. My the leg that went that was paralyzed was weak for ages after that episode and now it's completely healed up like i have full strength uh i'm so much more flexible everything moves better and i'm just stronger uh, all over just completely stronger um, and how long have you been carnivore now seven months oh wow yeah has your, has your body composition changed like yeah, I've lost 35 pounds. Oh, wow. Um, I haven't done any of those. I haven't uh, checked to see what my body fat levels are or anything like that. Um, and I haven't gone for any blood tests since I started. So I'd be curious to go. Actually, I was anemic. That was the one thing that they said to me in the hospital was that I was anemic. That's important detail. <laughs> that is an important detail. So I think, I think uh, the majority of, of vegans are anemic. And it's crazy how casually they brush that off. No, like, oh, my level below. Is, so, there, you know, there's a bunch of overarching issues with deficiencies on the vegan diet. Most of them do develop B12. It seems like the B12 supplement can help. Uh, the problem is that these omega-3 deficiencies, these vitamin A deficiencies, most of the population has these. So they're not mm. noticing that. Same, especially D3. Yeah. The anemia, though, that is almost every vegan becomes anemic. Yep. And almost every vegetarian becomes anemic. And they cannot prevent it. The only way to prevent anemia is to consume some animal foods. Mm -hmm. I think even just 5 to 10% of your calories from animal yeah. foods might prevent anemia. Yeah. But speaking of these animal foods, you being in Ireland, the land of, I mean, I'm, I'm dreaming of, if I ever get to visit Ireland, I'm dreaming I'm going to walk into a field and the grass is going to be taller than me. And it's yeah. going to be like a, it's going to be like a forest green color. Am I right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's pretty green. It's really green when you fly over it as well. It's just like a blanket of like a, a, a patchwork quilt of green. I feel um, like I would dress up as a cow for a day and just start eating grass <laughs> and how good the grass looked over there. Maybe yeah. some vegans want to join me. If any of you guys want to fund Frankie's grass adventures in Ireland, let's, yeah. let's, let's start a GoFundMe. <laughs> no, but no, on a serious note, you guys are known for very high quality animal products, right? Yeah, we have really high quality beef. I mean, the majority of our beef is grass fed. Um, 
and the grain fed beef from Ireland is actually exported. It's exported. So if you get Irish beef, more than likely it's grain fed. We get all the good stuff here. So <laughs> unless it's going to like big, big restaurants, that mm-hmm. type of thing. Um, really good quality lamb, uh, lots of free range chickens and, and prop, proper free range, like in fields, not in a slightly larger cage. Not like, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> not, like, we gave them two more inches on each side of the cage. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. What else do you want? Exactly. Like chickens that go around and, and they're, they're eating grubs and they're eating maggots and that type of stuff. So they've got oh. a diverse diet. It's not just corn and all that crap. Um, yeah, we've got really good quality animal products here, really good quality dairy. The Irish milk, full fat milk is okay. delicious. Most people will say Kerrygold, but Kerrygold actually isn't usually from Ireland. So what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't know that. Kerrygold, they think it's Irish butter. It's not actually Irish butter. Uh, what was I going to say? If I could send you some some irish dairy i would but i don't think it would fare too well in the post <laughs> yeah i don't think they would uh they'd probably cut it open and uh, they wouldn't allow it to be sent yeah. uh one interesting thing that i just just came back in my mind was the i have a theory and i've had people tell me not it's my not my theory some people told me this that the mad cow disease mm-hmm. craze in the uk was partially i mean well the reason it started hypothetically was they fed sheep that had scrappy to the cows. Somehow they okay. ground up some bone meal. And that's how the cows got mad cow disease. There's also a conspiracy that it might have just been a ploy to make it so Ireland and UK can't import beef to the United States anymore. Right. So that the beef in the United States can take over. So, uh, and, that's, and there's also, like South America doesn't import beef. The only country that imports beef to the US is Australia and New Zealand. And I I just don't, it's very, it's a very like foggy subject Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Like it's not, it's questionable. Uh, Definitely something interesting to know. That's why we can't get, for those of you guys are like, she was saying, oh, if you get Irish imported beef, but the reason you've never seen Irish imported beef in America is because it's not allowed. Yeah. Uh, You know, I didn't know that. That's crazy. You know, it's, it's, I'm a little salty about it, but uh, yeah. what are you gonna do? It's it's just, it's unfortunate. They just well, if you ever come to Ireland, to I'll show you all the good places. We can go and get a big a big uh, T bone. There's a great place over here called the FX Buckley, and they do all grass fed beef. Uh, have you heard of? You can I, get your steak I, plain. The only one I heard of is Hawksmoor, but that's in UK, right? I don't know that's, if you've heard of them. That's oh, I've never heard of that. No, I think, I think that's they're actually. they're in London. Okay. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, no, I used to work. I used to bartend at an Irish bar. Uh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Did everyone get super drunk and ready there? I was like, I was like, I was like the one of the only non-Irish people working there. <laughs> it wasn't too crazy. Um, I mean, you know Oscar Wilde. Uh, yeah, it's the name of the bar in New York City. Oh, okay. Uh, a bunch yeah. of, very ornate place. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can Google that. It's a pretty cool spot. Uh, I don't work there anymore, but uh, that's my that's my recollection of Ireland. Actually, uh, interesting fact about those Irish pubs. There's actually a, a factory in China that mass produces everything for those irish pubs so antique you know that bullshit all the antique bullshit is mass produced so you you're like okay i want the 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 patties package and they send you like the package with all of the the That's old funny. ship wheels and all that type of stuff yeah so it's it's mass produced in china now i know how they open bars. that rest now i know how they open that bar so quickly <laughs> yeah <there laughs> that explains it. it's funny <laughs> yeah i don't want to talk negatively so, but go figure yeah. Did you have any, uh, I mean, that was a very clear, concise story. I, very good. So did you have any, like, notes, things to tell people? Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a big message in people really being ingrained as a vegan. Uh, mm-hmm. But did you have a message about that and, and kind of, like, what finally clicked in your head about like, I, I Was think, it when you actually went carnivore and saw that everything went away? Yeah. Like, the one thing I would say to anyone out there who is trying to be vegan, I ignored all the warning signs. Like I ignored all of them and I, I, I put it down to like, there's a lot of autoimmune diseases in my family and I just thought, right, that's my destiny. That's probably just the way it's going to go, but it doesn't have to be, you know, mm-hmm. re-examine your diet, uh, mm-hmm. see what you're taking in. Are you having a lot of sugar? Are you having a lot of processed grains and reevaluate things, uh, before you resign yourself to just being a sick person. That, that's what I would say, because mm-hmm. had I not tried the carnivore diet, I would probably now be in the same position, but pumped full of steroids. Actually, 
it was a while after when I when I got a diagnosis as such, they they said that it was probably a condition called hemiplegic migraines. So it's a very rare migraine disorder that causes you to go numb down one side of your body. Mm. At this point, I was about a month into being carnivore. And they asked me if I wanted to go on medication for it. And the medication is ketamine and beta blockers. Sounds fun as shit. Holy <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> right? So I would have been a zombie, like an absolute zombie. Uh, and I said, no, thanks. It's fine. I said, I, I am doing 100 times better now. Uh, I don't think I need any medication. I feel great. Uh, so it was nice to be able to say that. And, and so I'm so glad that I don't have to be on all that powerful medication. Uh, wasting my life away and killing my liver and killing my kidneys <laughs> no it's you know? unfortunate uh yeah. yeah i mean there's a lot of things there you know that uh well you know mickey for mickey mantle thought he was always going to die young so he just drank and did uh, followed a poor lifestyle you know yeah and, you know if you're if your father's a gambling addict doesn't mean you have to be a gambling addict people don't yeah. realize that uh they yeah. take a lot of things for granted and then it t- that ties into falling into uh falling into the conventional wisdom whether it's um, it could be my, gra- you know, being like my grandmother and getting the doctor to having her take a statin, mm. uh, being like my father and being stuck on Lexapro and all these crazy medications that ruin your life. Uh, or it could be like my great grandfather who followed a diet high in wheat and used to beat the shit out of his wife. You know, there's, so you've uh, got ag- aggression problems. And- yeah. There's, there's problems correlated to modern nutrition. There's problems yeah. correlated to, and as we get more and more modern and go further away from our indigenous roots, things just get worse and worse and worse. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. But. Yeah. Like I find it really awful when it, when I see, uh, an, oh, another thing about the carnivore diet is I didn't realize that I had, I never thought that I had anxiety beforehand. I was completely unaware of it. And then it was about a month in and I said, you know, I, I've stopped worrying. I, was, mm-hmm. I, I don't know why, but I just don't worry as much. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I had anxiety beforehand because I, I, I just felt so free of unnecessary troubles. So my brain was a lot quieter and a lot calmer and I was a lot more zen. Uh, so I feel really sorry when you, you see these kids that are really poorly behaved and they're there with like a slushy or something in their hand or... They, they eat cereal, cereal with uh, mm. low-fat milk for breakfast. They have yeah. a Lunchable for dinner. They got a couple of cool, some Kool Aid and some Gushers thrown in there for snacks, and then for yeah. uh, for dinner, what do they eat? Pasta. It's we're addicted to sugar since we started. And then I spoke to a, a Bul- Bulgarian woman a couple couple weeks ago, and even with their you know their their doctor and their dietary knowledge is almost it's a little old school. So they'll say yeah. things that are actually true, like oh, eat animal foods, do this, do that. But now what they're doing even in those countries is they're starting to get these kids recommending, oh, give him fruit juice when he's seven months old. They're getting people addicted early. And it's, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we not people are aware of this. This isn't something that, you know, a lot of things that are brought up in these, uh, you know, these discussions I have with people, you know, most of the time people know these things or they just need to be turned on to the idea. We don't have Mm -hmm. to. Uh, it's really just making people slightly aware of these things yeah. and they can always do it, their own research themselves and, and look into it further. Like I was completely unaware of all of that. Um, I thought that carbohydrates were great for you and fat was bad. Fat was the enemy. Uh, that's what I, what I thought. That's why I ate so many carbs and, and never had fat, like to the point where I wouldn't even allow myself to have olive oil. Uh, I was so strict about it. And now that's what I survive off. That's the disconnect. The disconnect diet. is the disconnect is crazy. You know, mm. carbohydrates didn't exist until a few thousand years ago. Yeah, we used to only eat fat, and uh, it, I just feel like th- these big co- these big corporations. I feel like they just got lucky and and people got brainwashed. I don't even think they knew what they were doing at the time. You know, when yeah. the USDA Department of Agriculture in the 1970s did all this wacko stuff, they had no idea how easy it would be to brain i don't think they they had any idea how easy it would be to brainwash people saying fat is bad because if you're mm-hmm. fat you don't look and then everyone yeah. gets fat eating carbohydrates and they don't put two and two together it's crazy yeah uh, but um uh well veganism is starting to get really big now in ireland when i first went vegan there was nothing like there was no uh, you could get soy milk in some shops that was as vegan as it was uh, <laughs> yeah i feel like now is the point in time where i mean I, I used to I used to lift weights for ten years, and when I was working out in the gym, weightlifting wasn't popular. 
from like 2007 to 2015, I worked out like two hours in the gym every day. 2015, 2016 is when fitness started getting popular. And same with diet, same with all this stuff. So mm -hmm. diet, nutrition, health, fitness is getting more and more and more popular now. And it's going to mainstream. Everyone's going to the gym. Everyone wants to be on a diet. It's just, uh, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Yeah, yeah like when I told everyone I went, I went vegan at first, no one had heard of it. And they all thought that I was mad. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, now that's if you said it in Ireland, they'd be like, oh, great, you're looking after your health. But at the time, everyone was worried about me. And rightly so. <laughs> yeah, rightly <laughs> so, <seems>. right? <laughs> uh, but it's it's changed now. Now now veganism has become a lot more mainstream and there's this poster down at the Keys, which is like in the city centre of Dublin, that's I don't know, it's some bullshit. It's a cow and a calf and it's like vegan is or dairy rips babies from their mothers, that type know, of shit, you know. For for me, if if I know if someone if someone tells me to do something, the first thing I always think of is what what's in it for them? And then I'm like, okay. If it's fair, that's fine. But, you know, there's a lot of it's not mm -hmm. as simple as that. You know, uh, yeah. people tend to take things at face value, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, Taylor, did you have any final notes to touch on? I think we'll wrap this up. I think we really conveyed a great message. Uh, OK, good stuff. Uh, I, I suppose what I would say is if you are a vegan watching this right now and you are experiencing anything that I experienced, uh, maybe rethink things. Start thinking about adding in some animal products. Well, unfortunately Watch for you, I think, <laughs> I think I think any of these vegans are already seething at their their mouth. Yeah. They're like, Frank, stop it. Stop putting on makeup. You're lying to people about the carnivore. That's what they're doing right now. They're and that's like, such a pity because I've nothing, you know, I've nothing but sympathy and love for these guys. You know, I just want to help them out. And you're the same. I, I, yeah, you know, the lesson I've learned is, listen, I'm, I made a video on vegan gains. You know, I was, I didn't say anything. I, I said, yeah, we've had negative experiences and I don't really like the guy, but he shouldn't get his channel taken away. You know what he does the second he gets his channel back? He makes posts a video, a video, about, video, makes a video about me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And as I said in that video, <laughs> suck my fat Italian cock. I will say it again and again and again. That was honestly, when he, when he put, you have, when he put that in his video critique of like a week ago, everyone was hysterical that I said that it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, he makes these videos and like people come to my channel and they're like, oh, this guy's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's so that's uh, but anyway, I uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm getting way too sidetracked today. <laughs> but Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very uh, much for having me. You don't speak any other languages, do you? No. Uh, do you want me to say something in Irish? Yes. Yes. Uh, they, uh, Kate uh, yeah. Mila wrote, uh, Kuna how are you? And that's about all I know because the educational <laughs> system over here is terrible. So. Oh, that's great. But uh, no, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys would like to support the channel, subscribe, like, share the video, all that stuff. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of stuff in the comments if you guys want to check that out. Uh, obviously, I've done videos like Vegan 2018, debunking it, a lot of stuff on anti-nutrients, a lot of stuff contradicting vegans. Uh, if you guys want to check out the Patreon, there's some exclusive videos. Instagram, Twitter, I'm on all of that stuff. My website, uh, feel free to check that stuff out. But uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your week, all right? Bye, guys.